In Stoichiometry podcast number four, I'm going to talk to you about purity and percentage yield. Now, purity is something we've already discussed in terms of the fact that most reactants are not 100% pure. So you have a, an expression that can be used by dividing the mass of the pure chemical by the mass of the impure chemical and taking that and multiplying it by 100 will give you the percentage purity, okay? So some of the assumptions we've discussed involving stoichiometry um, have assumed 100% pure chemical. In reality, that's not the case. So let's try a problem where we're actually given the percent purity. All right, so for here you're asked what mass of sodium hydride can be formed from the combination of 15 grams of 80% pure sodium with an excess of hydrogen gas. At this point, after all the limiting reactant problems you've worked out, you're probably breathing a sigh of relief because you are explicitly being told that hydrogen gas is in excess. So all you need to worry about is going from your sodium over to the product, which is the synthesis of a metal hydride, in this case, sodium hydride. All right, so pause the video, go ahead and write and balance the chemical equation, and we'll take a look at it now. We have a two to one to two stoichiometric or mole ratio. And one thing I wanna do on a side note, um, because we are big picture, is I wanna loop back into some content from chemical reactions. I want to, to try to assign oxidation states to these chemical species. Go ahead and pause it and try to do that right now. And the reason I've chosen this example is because this is an exception for hydrogen. Hydrogen, in this case, because it's part of a metal hydride, will actually accept one electron and assume an oxidation state of minus one. And sodium, of course, is going to give away that electron. So sodium is our reducing agent in this case. It's causing the hydrogen to be reduced from a uh, oxidation state of zero to an oxidation state of minus one. So kind of need to, to look back at some of those things to make sure we're, we're keeping sharp here on that. Let's move on to some stoichiometry. I want you to pause this and do a gram to mole calculation. But before you can do that, you need to think, how am I going to get 80% pure sodium? Okay, now most of us are probably saying, geez, that's 0 0.8 multiplied by 15, okay? Um, if you want to use a plug and chug approach, just so you can see this equation in use, you could pop in all of your numbers here. You could algebraically rearrange this to solve for the mass of pure sodium by multiplying both sides by 15, dividing by 100. However you want to do it, whatever is easiest for you, it, it, it works for me. So we're going to use... 12 grams of sodium in our stoichiometry. Here, all laid out for you. Molar mass, molar mass, a two to two stoichiometric molar ratio. Okay, now we're in moles of the metal hydride and in one mole there are 24 grams. All right, so that gives us our answer of 12.5 grams because that's what we're being asked for. What mass of this? So essentially, we were given this in its impure form, 15, calculated it in its pure form of 12, used stoichiometry to convert it into 12.5 grams of the product. All right. Uh, here's another example. This one's a little different in that you are being asked, what is the percentage purity? Okay, so a little twist on this problem here. Um, same exact equation to save us a little bit of time here. Um, and you are, you have a 7.5 gram sample of sodium. 
This is the impure sodium. So this will go in here. Remember, this is what we're trying to find. So what you're going to have to do here is you're producing this many grams. So you're going to need to do a gram to gram and find out what the pure sodium is. Then you can compare that to the impure and get a percentage purity for this case. So pause the video and go ahead and try that. All right. So seven grams molar mass, seven grams in one mole, two to two stoichiometric ratio. And in one mole of sodium, there are 22.99 grams of sodium. Gives me six point seven pure sodium. So we're going to take that and pop it in here. And that's going to give us our ability to calculate the percentage purity as 89% pure. Okay, so take a look at all this, think about it a little bit, and most importantly, rep recognize how this is applicable to real life chemistry. Okay, percentage yield. All right, so Percentage yield is expressed using the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield. Actual yield. Let me tell you some terms that we may see. Instead of actual yield, you may see experimental yield, especially in lab. We're going to do a lab with this. Imagine that. So experimentally, how much did you yield or produce? Theoretical is what you calculate using stoichiometry, okay? Ideally, theoretically, how much will you produce, all right? And then multiplying that by 100 is going to give you the percentage yield, all right? So you know that not all reactions go entirely to completion, okay? You understand a little bit about purity of that. You understand that there may not be enough energy put into it. You understand that there are side reactions and alternate reactions. So we're typically going to have percentage yield be a part of nearly all of your labs from this point forward. Okay, so let's take a look here at our example three. Um, so we have a solution containing 15.2 grams of barium bromide and it's react with a solution containing an excess. That's great news. We're being told which is the excess reagent. So we know that barium bromide is the limiting reagent and it's forming 9.5 grams of a precipitate. What is the percentage yield in this process? So here's the deal. You are being given the actual yield. It's 9.5. All right, so I'm going to draw a little arrow up here. 9.5 grams are actually produced, are experimentally produced, are observed. Okay? And so we need stoichiometry to find the theoretical yield. All right, so how does all stoic start? With a balanced chemical equation, I want you to do this one right here. There's some fun nomenclature. So pause the video and write out and balance this chemical equation. Okay, we use our states of matter and solubility table or solubility rules to um, discern that the barium phosphate is our precipitate, i.e. the solid, and all the other species here are aqueous, okay? Um, balanced, we get a two, three to two to six to one mole ratio. Next step, write down 9.5 grams here, and we wanna know what is the percentage yield of this process and we have 15.2 um, of the barium bromide. And we are going to assume that all of the barium bromide is going to be consumed. This is going to go entirely 
to completion with regard to the limiting reactant, okay? And we're gonna have leftover sodium phosphate um, when this is all said and done. So our stoichiometry will begin with the 15.2 grams of the barium bromide, okay? Um, calculating molar masses using that three to one mole ratio here converts us from the barium bromide into the barium phosphate. And in one mole of barium phosphate, there are 601.93 grams of barium phosphate. And that's where we're ending. We're trying to find out how many grams of barium phosphate are theoretical, okay? Um, 9.5 is the actual. So stoichiometry, I just wanna make sure that's clear, is being used. So in theory, if the reaction goes to completion and there are no side reactions, no impurities, all of that good stuff, we should produce 10.3 grams of barium phosphate. But what we actually produce was 9.5. So if you take these numbers and throw them into the equation, plug and chug, you'll see we have a 92% yield in this process. Last example here, the combustion of 8,944 kilograms of glucose results in the formation of 5.75 times 6 liters of carbon dioxide gas measured at a, uh, STP. What is the percentage yield? All right. So I would love for you to go ahead and attempt this entire problem on your own to see if you can get it correct. You probably have this equation memorized from last year. All right, so combustion of glucose to yield carbon dioxide. We have a one to six to six to six mole ratio in this case here. And we have a ton, or not literally, but we have a lot of, um, uh, of the glucose being converted. And it's forming this so many liters of CO2, okay? All right, so... Our stoichiometry is going to, well, what is this number, okay? That's the amount that's actually produced, all right? We want to know the theoretical yield, so that way we can calculate the percentage yield, all right? How do we do that? We use stoichiometry to do that. So if you go through and you multiply all this good stuff out and you convert your kilograms to grams um, and you find your molar masses, which are in grams, which is the purpose of the conversion, as you know, and you use the correct mole ratio of a six to one and you convert at STP to 22.4 liters of carbon dioxide or any other gas for that matter, and you multiply everything on the top and you divide that quantity by everything on the bottom, you are going to get 6.67 times 10 to the 6 liters of carbon dioxide. Ask yourself, what is this value? Is this actual or theoretical? It's the theoretical value. So in your percent um, yield equation, you're going to pop in the numerator the value that was given to you, and in the denominator, you're gonna pop in the value that we just calculated, and you will get the percentage yield of 86.2% yield. Notice you can do this with quant other molar quantities. We're using liters here. You can use grams, all right? So either method will work because you're just trying to compare how much was actually produced with how much theoretically should be produced. All right. So that's going to conclude the podcast on purity and percentage yield. You do have a problem set that goes along with these two concepts, and I will see you guys in class.